Insanity. Uh, insanity is actually one of my favorite words that I use to describe things because I think we're all mentally ill to some degree. I mean, we all tend to remain in this perpetual cycle of self-destructive thinking and behavior. We live with a vast array of personalities that are vying for attention and prominence inside of our cranial domes. I mean, it's kind of one of those may the loudest voice win at any given time, right? Duh, that's why we say dumb things. We do dumb things. I don't think it's necessarily because we're dumb, even though we're dumbing ourselves down. But that's insane, too. I, I think it's more because we don't know how to quell the inner madman that's trying to get out. So what's your flavor of the day? Paranoia, anxiety, bipolar, depression, obsessive compulsive. I mean, name your crazy. There's something for everybody. Psychosis, schizophrenia, social disorder, Ugh, all kinds of obsessions. Maybe you just need the demons cast out. Now, the fact that you can name your insanity means that we've taken them in like a stray dog and given them a home where they can feel comfortable right inside of our mind. Just cozy up right next to them and sleep all night long. You got no intention of ever kicking them out. So if you don't believe me, just turn on the news and look at the world. Look at the crazy on display. It's insanity. Insanity. And we think that's how the world is just supposed to be now. Embrace the insanity, right? Because there's no way we're going to fix any of it. Oh, the world's always been crazy. Well, let's take a stab at some of today's insanity and see if maybe we can get some of those crazy little ducks that are floating around in our mind back in a row. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the Chad Prather Show. I love y'all. God bless you. Here we go. I'd love to say they blurred it out, but there was nothing to blur out. I was like, what am I looking at? There's nothing there. And it looked like the fish ate his worm. If Stephen Hawking is engaged in some kind of wild sexual fantasies being played out, you can drag his puddle of mud ass right out of that chair and throw him in there, as long as those people are consenting adults. But that's not what we were dealing with here. I don't care who it affects. I don't care if it shuts down Hollywood. I don't care if it shuts down Washington, D.C. You know what? You show me a picture of Congress, I'm telling my grandkids that was Epstein's client list. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. Uh, crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy all over the world. That's why we come in here and we cloister in the cave. Welcome to the best podcast that's out there. Just everybody doesn't know that yet. They don't know it yet, so it's up to you to make sure that you tell your friends that there's this really cool dude who sits in, in front of a microphone and he tells you all these things you need to know about life. Now, we've been getting into some more devotional thoughts because I wanted you to get into this new year, this new year, which has uh, already gotten crazy. And I want it, the day's topic is crazy. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. All kind of crazy stuff is going on in the world. We're going to talk about some of these things. I mean, uh, Stephen Hawking on Epstein's list. We've got um, the dude that attacked the judge in Las Vegas. We've got uh, the door that ripped off the airplane. I mean, it's a bad day for Boeing. I get to fly this week. I can't wait. I love those 737 Maxes. Lots of crazy stuff going on in the world. We're going to get into it. But I need you to help me. Tell your friends, tell your family to watch or listen to this show. I promise you they're going to fall in love with it. And we're going to give them, give them stuff they can use, man. So uh, tell them. And look, we made it easy for you. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on X. Full episodes. Every, every time we do one, they're pinned to the top of my profile, at Watch Chad. Uh, we're putting clips, smaller clips on Reels, on Instagram. You even have full episodes on my Facebook pages and I, I get it that I've got a lot of Facebook pages. But go, go, go to the verified blue check mark Chad Prather Facebook page. And guess what? You scroll down the timeline, you'll find it. If you scroll down that timeline, you might discover a lot of stuff that I've done. Like the fact that, you know, there's still truck videos out there. We even went so far as to give you truck videos at the, at the beginning of every episode. Oh, the things I do for you guys. I'm going to look at this camera right here and I'm going to tell you up close and personal. Go tell your friends and family about the show. Do it. And then uh, when you get bored, go to where podcasts are offered. Leave us a five-star rating. We deserve it. And a review. I'm going to light some candles in here. This isn't a mass in the cave, but it does smell like a dog in here, Shy. Uh, Shy, the unseen Singaporean over there pushing buttons, making us look pretty. And I will say, Shy, you know what they said to us? You know what they said to us? All of the comments. Everybody said, man, it's so pretty. The set is so pretty. Uh, the coloring is nice. The camera looks nice. The lighting is nice. Some of my podcast friends were all sending me messages, and they were saying, man, we would love to know what you're using, man. What are you using? I mean, network people were saying, we want to know what you're using. I said, I got shy, the unseen Singaporean. 
That's what I got. And you can't have him. Nobody said we love the content. <laughs> Nobody said, Chad, what you said was so dadgum profound, we can never miss the show again. Wow. Wow. But it does look good in here, and uh, we, we're making tweaks. We're making tweaks, man. Hey, guys, you know, for 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. And when I say the only one, trust me, they are the only one. And uh, Patriot Mobile has been a great supporter of this show, and I'm proud to continue partnering with them. You know, Patriot Mobile offers uh, dependable nationwide coverage, and they give you access to all three major networks, which means you're going to get the same dependable coverage that you're accustomed to without funding leftist causes. See, when you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending a message. You're saying that you support free speech, religious liberty, uh, the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment, our first responder, and our military heroes. And they have a 100% U.S.-based customer service team, which is going to make switching so easy. You can keep your number, keep your phone. Call them up. They'll help you upgrade with a brand new phone. Whatever you need, their team will help you find the best plan for your needs. You go to patriotmobile.com slash Chad. Uh, you call them on the phone if you want to, 972-PATRIOT. Talk to them. And you get free activation when you use promo code CHAD. I spell it Chad. That's right. Join me. Make the switch today. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Chad. That's patriotmobile.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Call them up. 972-PATRIOT. Did you guys see the nut that jumped into the, uh, the fish pond, whatever you call that, the little aquarium that they have at Bass Pro Shops? You know, you go into a Bass Pro Shop, if, you, if you're red, redneck like me, you go into Bass Pro Shop, it is a redneck holy land. It's a mecca. Everything you want. And they have this big aquarium in there with these big monster fish, you know, giant largemouth bass and all these things just kind of habitating in there. And uh, Leeds, Alabama, man, Leeds, Alabama, the place where you go to get all of the uh, intellectual knowledge, uh, intellectual prowess on display. Uh, this guy, he ripped off his clothes, did a cannonball right there in the Bass Pro Shop. That's Birmingham, Alabama area. And respect to this guy, because I don't know, he looked like, uh, if you saw the video of this thing, I, I would love to say they blurred it out because he just presses right up against the glass in the front of the aquarium. I'd love to say they blurred it out, but there was nothing to blur out. I was like, what am I looking at? There's nothing there. And yes, I was looking because I was like, is this guy in a, in a bodysuit? No, no, no. There he's, he's full pubic right there pressed against the glass and it looked like the fish ate his worm. I mean, there was nothing there. I was like, is this a transgender? I mean, college athletes, have, college swimming has really gone crazy, man. This guy, you know, Leah Thomas has let himself go. Just jumped right in the pool, and there was nothing there. Um, I don't know. It was weird. It was weird. There's a little micro situation going on. And the water was cold. I, I don't want to harp too much on this thing, but you got to give it to the guy for the boldness here. I mean, just body positivity in that regard. Uh, but if that's any indication of where we're headed in 2024, oh, it gets crazier. Um, I mentioned the door ripping off the Boeing airplane. And uh, the door, some windows, the whole thing. I don't think anybody got hurt on that, but that's scary. You know, you're flying in an airplane, all of a sudden, <laughs> the, the, half the plane, the whole side of the thing is gone. It's an open fuselage. Can you imagine you're on the ground and, and the door of a Boeing 737 just lands in your backyard? Can, can you imagine that? I mean, where did this come from? A um, lot of scary stuff going on. Uh, I don't know what kind of plane it was. I'm assuming it was a 737. I don't know, because they've had trouble with those 737 Maxes in the past. Every time I get on one, I kind of say an extra prayer. Uh, but it was a Boeing airplane, so mm, bad day for them. And then, of course, in Las Vegas, there was the judge who was reading off the sentencing to this guy. And uh, I think the guy was about to get like six months in jail. Uh, instead, he decides to just do a... a flying leap over the top of the judge's bench and right into the judge and the bailiffs are, I don't know what the bailiffs were doing. There was a lot of like girl slapping going on, trying to get this guy off of the female judge. Um, yeah, you're not safe anywhere. It, and part of me, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Part of me was like, I'm kind of, I, like, it's interesting that these smug people in these places of authority always think that they're untouchable. And this guy just proved that, you know, uh, right there in the middle of your courtroom with all the decorum, please rise, all of that stuff. This guy just plop, plopped right in her lap. I mean, this guy, they, they really, the Dallas Cowboys should sign this guy heading into the playoffs, but I think he's going to be otherwise a little bit busy in the, uh, in the uh, Nevada uh, uh, penal system. 
But uh, interesting the way that went down. And no, I'm not advocating advocating violence against people in elected positions. I'm not. But it was kind of interesting to see her smug face change real quick when suddenly that guy was doing a vertical leap of like eight feet to get over that deal. And he cleared it. He cleared it. So, um, you know. Uh, which again, shy. I think the takeaway there is black people are better athletes. I think that was the lesson of the whole deal, really. Um, okay, I digress before we get canceled. Uh, then there was, of course, uh, Stephen Hawking was mentioned quite extensively on Jeffrey Epstein's list of acquaintances. You know, they came out with that thing the other day. In, in, in Jeffrey Epstein's list, this was not a client list. This was a deposition from uh, and I never get her. I never have known how to say her name. Virginia Guffrey, Jeffrey. However, she was one of the children. And I will. And I will. Whenever I refer to Epstein's victims, I will always consistently refer to them as children, because that's what they were. Whenever, um, whenever they were victims of Jeffrey Epstein and his clientele, uh, they may be grown women now. But the news media a lot of times refers to these victims as women who are testifying. No, they were children. When these atrocious sexual acts were done to them, they were children. And so the list of acquaintances comes out, and a lot of people, as I said weeks ago, I said this list of acquaintances isn't going to do anything because of that key word. These are, these are associates is what the word they were using. Associates. They weren't clients. They weren't people who were on the flight logs. <clears throat> And now everybody's coming out saying, see, this doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Well, it was very telling that at least by this one deposition <clears throat> that Donald Trump seemed to be exonerated. Now, if you put this on social media, because I've already seen this, if you put this on Instagram, you will get fact-checked. They'll put a USA Today article up there. And what they will say is this information has already been released in 2016 or 2019 it's not new information. I, I'm not saying it was new information. Listen, four years ago, I did an expose on Jeffrey Epstein, a five-part expose. You can go to my X feed, and it's there. You'll see the entire thread of all five episodes. We did a docu-series on Jeffrey Epstein, who he was, where he came from, what he was all about. And I'll get into some more of that because I want to talk about that today. Uh, I want to talk about it because it's very, very relevant to so many different things. But they'll tell you it's not new information. We know it's not information. We Not new information. We've been telling you this literally for years. And now the mainstream is starting to come in and talk about it. But it's amazing how they still defend this information. They defend this information from getting out there. So if you talk about this, I'm sure if we put this clip on Instagram, we will get a fact check. We will get a block. We will get something like that that will hurt our algorithm. It'll throttle us back. But I'm willing to talk about it. I'm willing to take the risk because it's worth talking about. So Jeffrey Epstein has this list of, of acquaintances, these associates, if you will. Donald Trump, at least by this one woman's, this one woman who was a child at the time, her deposition, uh, Donald Trump didn't do anything. He didn't 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 have. They asked, did you did he did you massage him? She said no. It didn't have anything to do with him. Uh, it wasn't the same though for guys like Bill Clinton and uh, and. Uh, Prince Edward, or I'm sorry, Prince Andrew, Andrew I'm getting ahead of the generations here, uh, Prince Andrew and, uh, the, uh, and Stephen Hawking. Now, one of the things we're talking about, Stephen Hawking engaged in all kind of stuff. I mean, they're talking about, and the memes have been hilarious uh, that have come out in the past week of Stephen Hawking. You know, there's this guy on fire in a, in a wheelchair. He says, <laughs> Stephen Hawking coming out of hell to exonerate himself. Um Stephen Hawking, who's been dead, I think, for seven years, he was a victim of some kind of sclerosis that kept him in the wheelchair. Uh, uh, people say, oh, he's one of the brightest minds that's ever existed. I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I don't care if you can solve math problems or come up with some kind of theories or some kind of equations and solve them. I, my issue there is the guy didn't have a whole lot of common sense. He was very outspoken as, a, as an atheistic mind, as a person who didn't believe in God. And anybody who can look at the universe the way that Stephen Hawking supposedly did and not see a designer, I'm sorry, I just don't think you're that smart. But that's my opinion. Um, and it tends to be right. So 
Stephen Hawking was engaged in all kind of nefarious things, which is crazy to me, which, which personally, you know, if Stephen Hawking is engaged in some kind of wild sexual fantasies being played out, you can, you can drag his puddle of mud ass right out of that chair and throw him in there as long as those people are consenting adults. But that's not what we were dealing with here. So my thing is I want to call all of them out. I want to expose all of them. If they were engaged in any form, any level, any experience of pedophilia whatsoever, they need to be revealed. So I don't want the flight lists. I don't want the client list. I want the tapes. I want the tapes because we know that the FBI has confiscated tapes on Epstein. We know that they have. They're out there. They exist. Jelaine Maxwell has come around to confirming them. I've stated it in, in, the, in the show last uh, uh, the other night. Last Thursday night, we talked about Jelaine Maxwell revealing the idea that tapes were out there. We know that the FBI has these tapes. Who's on the tapes? Because listen, I don't know if Jeffrey Epstein was a, was a Mossad. I, I think he probably was. I think he probably was a spy for Israel. I have no problem believing that. You know, you can, you can look at so many different things that are out there. So many articles that were written. And I mean, like articles by people like MSN who, uh, who talk about Jeffrey Epstein as an agent for Mossad. And I'm like, um, you know, we know that Robert Maxwell, who was Jelaine Maxwell's father, uh, you know, they still say he had a heart attack on his boat. Again, if you go back and you look at uh, the stuff that I did in my docuseries years ago, we, we talk about the nefarious way that Robert Maxwell died by falling off of his boat. Eh, was it a heart attack? Was it a heart attack that he just had by natural causes? Not quite so sure on that. Um, so I'm, you know, a little bit, a little bit concerned, a little bit concerned that uh, we have these people who perhaps were uh, Israeli intelligence who were setting up celebrities, setting up politicians, setting up royalty to have information on them. It's something that I won't dive too deep into today, but I will tell you, it is something worth uh, worth digging into to see if you can come up with some information. Do a little bit of research on your own. Um, you know, Jeffrey Epstein was, he. we talk about him being a billionaire. He was a financier, okay? Um, you can try to figure out whatever that means. He was a player in the financial world, um, and people came to him, and he played them like little chess pieces, but he was being played like a chess piece as well. Uh, I mean, you, you can get into... Um, you get into the, you know, Les Wexner, all these guys that were out there who created the Jeffrey Epstein of Jeffrey Epstein's of the world, who uh, the mansion in Manhattan, the island, the Zorro Ranch in New Mexico, all of these things were happening. And we talk about him being a billionaire. He wasn't really a billionaire. I mean, the guy was a, was a failure in, in life academically. He was a math and science substitute teacher on the middle school level. And of course, he was trying to teach middle school, being around kids. But uh, they used him. They used him. They used his perversion to try to trap other people to get information on them. So I want to see the tapes. That's what I want to see. I want to know who's on there. And it's interesting that comedian Jim Gaffigan, who hosted the Golden Globes the other night, Jim Gaffigan, and I didn't watch it. I just saw this clip, this particular clip, where Jim Gaffigan had uh, something interesting to say. He said, you know, I'm a, I'm a comedian from Indiana. And uh, I don't fit in with this Hollywood crowd. I'm paraphrasing. He said, and he throws this phrase in. He goes, I'm not a pedophile. And it's interesting whether it's him or Ricky Gervais who tosses out a comment like that when they host these shows. When you see the audience reaction, all of these Hollywood elites, they, they get a little pissed off. Uh, they don't want to laugh at it. It's very uncomfortable, nervous laughter because they're getting lumped in with pedophiles. Um, and many of them, guess what? Based on the evidence, they are. So I say call them out. I say call all of them out. Let's, let's expose every single one of them because here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. If you're operating in that echelon of society at this point, whether it's Hollywood, you're a celebrity, you're a millionaire, billionaire, you're an elitist, you're a politician, you're a dignitary, you are royalty, something, then you know something about this world. And either you're engaged in it or you're choosing not to talk about it. And if that's the case, if that's the case, you're equally guilty. Uh, listen, 
We know what Harvey Weinstein was doing with these young actresses when they were coming to Hollywood. We know that people like Oprah Winfrey was introducing them to Harvey. We know that Michelle Obama called uh, Harvey Weinstein a fine, fine man. We know all of those things. We know that um, uh, they, you know, applauded him. He was welcomed in. These people knew exactly what he was doing. After the Harvey Weinstein stuff started to come out, all of these celebrities, whether it was Matt Damon or Ben Affleck or whoever it was, they all knew. They all admitted they knew what he was doing because it was all part of the Hollywood game. That's BS, guys. That's BS. And the fact that we're more focused on arresting people who were within a quarter mile of the Capitol building on January 6th rather than trying to uncover every pedophile ring in this country. I don't care who it affects. I don't care if it shuts down Hollywood. I don't care if it shuts down Washington, D.C. I don't care if it cleans house of every A-list celebrity, every elected politician. I don't care. You know what? You show me a picture of Congress. I'm telling my grandkids that was Epstein's client list. I'm telling you, that's where I'm at at this point. Because if you're going to continue to withhold justice to this degree, to silence it, to fact check it, to throttle back information, then that tells me all I need to know. You're guilty by association. If you're trying to shut down the flow of information, there's something you don't want said. Now, if people don't have enough discernment to figure out what's true and what's false, guys, listen, it ain't up to the USA Today fact checkers out there to try to tell you what you should think and what you should believe. So here we are. Here we are. Thank God for USA Today fact checkers. Thank God that these people jump on Instagram and tell you that your opinion is false. And then they toss some headline alongside it and say, well, this is not new information. Therefore, we're going to throttle your account for the next 30 to 90 days. Uh, and, you know, you, you look at the suppression of information. And, and that's crazy to me. Like, that is crazy. Because, because what do they want to throw at you? They throw you some guy who's jumping in the pool, <laughs> jumping in the aquarium at the Bass Pro Shop. They throw you a door being ripped off the airplane. They throw you uh, somebody jumping over the bench to attack the judge. And that's what we're talking about. That's what we're building memes about. Even, even the dead guy, Stephen Hawking. We can make fun of Stephen Hawking all day long. Suddenly it's okay to make fun of a handicapped guy. We got, we got this guy in a wheelchair. I've seen memes from people scuba diving in wheelchairs saying they were, that's uh, uh, um, Stephen Hawking trying to get to um, Epstein's Island. I've seen people racing down the road in wheelchairs. They say, hey, you know, just found out that there was a new crop of girls that showed up at Epstein's Island, and here comes Stephen Hawking. You can talk about the dead guy, but we're not going to go after the real issues. I, I've said it over and over again because all you Twitter rereads want to come at me and you want to try to troll me and say, yeah, but Donald Trump, no, 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 no. There is literally zero evidence Donald Trump had anything to do with any women connected with Jeffrey Epstein. Not illegally. Not illegally. I'm telling you. I've told you over and over again, guys, you you people out there that love Donald Trump and think that you know, when, when Jesus walked on the water, Donald Trump was somewhere one step behind him. Let me tell you something. Donald Trump was a playboy. He's a billionaire playboy. He was a philanderer, cheated on every spouse. Uh, he, he was a womanizer by his own admission. He did all of these things. But in spite of that, there's no evidence that he was doing anything with kids. And it was no, and you said, well, he knew Jeffrey Epstein. Well, Jeffrey Epstein freaking knew everybody. He knew everybody. I mean, that was his whole deal, was who could he get in to his web so that he could blackmail him? Who could? Who could he get in there? And everybody wants to focus on people like Trump, but they never want to focus on the real people. Do you understand Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton, former president of the United States. Well, you can't talk about Bill Clinton like that. He's not matter. He's not running for president. <laughs> if you don't think Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton are influencing American policy right now to this day, you have your head in the sand. Bill Clinton matters, okay? Bill Clinton matters. He's former president of the United States. What he did as president of the United States was bad enough, the stuff we know about when he perjured himself about getting, you know, oral sex from an intern, 22 years old, by the way, uh, Monica Lewinsky, right there in the, in the Oval Office. That's bad enough. We know that, but... When you got a deposition that comes out talking about how Bill Clinton likes them young, Bill Clinton went into Vanity Fair 
and encouraged them not to publish information that would uh, implicate Jeffrey Epstein in these prostitution rings. That's common knowledge. Go out there and look it up. Guys, why in the hell would a former president of the United States Go to Vanity Fair. Go to Va- go to a rag like Vanity Fair and tell them not to say certain things about a, a, a financier named Jeffrey Epstein over his prostitution stuff, his trafficking stuff. Why would you protect that? What kind of world are we living in when the people that are supposed to be elected representatives of the United States of America, the re- representatives of you, the people, when, when they're going to go in and they're going to try to exonerate or protect individuals that are into this kind of nefarious stuff. It's disgusting to me. Clean house, man. Absolutely clean house. But now we're focused on, you know, we're fo- focused on swimming at the pro shop, Bass Pro Shop, and the door ripping off the plane. We're, and, and you know what? Hey, here's another thing. You want to talk about suppression of information? Crazy, crazy stuff. There was a trans-supporting gender-fluid mental weirdo that was a shooter in, where was it, Iowa? Someplace like that? They'd go in there and kill a sixth, sixth grader and tried to shoot up another school? Let me ask you, are they talking about that in the media? Are they talking about it? No, they buried it immediately, just like the Nashville shooting at the Covenant School. They buried all of that stuff because they don't want somebody with that kind of mental illness, that kind of thing. They're out there trying to normalize it. They're trying to normalize it. Why aren't they talking about that? in the middle of all the Stephen Hawking memes, why aren't they talking about the shooter? I mean, this is a person who's a trans-supporting gender fluid by their own admission and goes in there in the middle of mental illness uh, and and tries to shoot, shoot up a school. Why are they burying that? Why won't they just... And then you're going to fact check you for talking about it. Why aren't they talking about it, folks? Well, it looks like a storm is coming in. And you know, the funny thing about storms is they don't care if you're ready for them or not. I want you to be ready when the storm hits. Sometimes when it hits, it's too late. You can't prepare then. You know, there's warning signs, the thunder, the clouds, the lightning in the sky. They let you know that it's time to expect a storm. You also know that the time to prepare for the storm is always right now. Now, I wanna help you prepare for the coming storm. I want you to go to my special website, preparewithchad.com. When you're there, you're going to automatically save $200 on an essential three-month emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. Over the years, My Patriot Supply has helped millions of American families prepare for emergencies. Your family should be next. Now, sealed inside the ultra-durable packaging is their delicious meals that are going to last up to 25 years in storage and provide over 2,000 calories a day. You're able to eat right whenever things go wrong. And uh, these three-month emergency food kits from My Patriot Supply are going to help you do that. You need one for every member of your family. Two hundred dollars in savings. You can get enough for each member. They all deserve protection, right? Go to preparewithchad.com. Order by three p.m. any given day, and you will get free shipping on the same day. The website preparewithchad.com. Prepare for the storm. The suppression of information. The control of the flow of opinion, thoughts, and ideas. I've said forever and ever, conspiracy theories are what happens when the media starts telling you a story, and then they stop, and there's no such thing as a vacuum in nature. So what happens is your ideas, your thoughts, your opinions, and your questions, because we all have we all have inquiring minds, they all rush to fill the void. They all rush to fill the void. And what comes out of that is what they call a conspiracy theory. Now, you and I, we fancy ourselves critical complex thinkers. We're not too far off the mark usually. That's why we say our conspiracy theories are conspiracy facts at this point because we're, we're, we're batting a thousand in most cases. They take guys like Alex Jones, and Alex is a nut. I, I consider Alex a friend. I know Alex. Alex knows me. We've been on each other's shows. Alex is a nut. There's no question about it. Hell, by that category and definition, I'm a nut too. But look, how much stuff is he right about? They've tried to paint him, defame him, sue him. I mean, yeah, has he said things and been wrong on him? I I don't know, but so have you. You've said things that were wrong. You've said things you regret. You've said things that you took too far, probably last night in a fight with your wife. But here's the thing. We are going to crucify this guy who's the mouthpiece, who's the messenger. You're going to throw water on the fire alarm rather than addressing the fire. Why do we do that with guys like that? Why do we why do we do that? 
I mean, my friend Jack Posobiec is, is another one. Perfect example. Somebody who's consistently putting information out there, backing it up with investigation, great research, and they're saying, ah, this guy, he's a nut. He's a nut job. Why? Why are you going to suppress that kind of information? Put it out there. Let people judge for themselves. Well, the reason they do that is because they're trying to protect people. They're trying to protect people. And they're protecting the worst of the worst among us. They're coming out now. On January 6th, they chose the, uh, the January 6th to make an announcement that they're going to go. They're expanding their investigation even further because their witch hunt isn't quite big enough. They got to go out there and find more people, people who were with, you know, with anywhere on the Capitol grounds that day who might have said something that could be construed as illegal. But not a single arrest has been made from a client list from Jeffrey Epstein. Amazing. Jelaine Maxwell, she's in, she's in confinement right now. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein was arrested for, for trafficking and prostitution and underage sex. And, and we know they had clients. Not a single client has been arrested, hasn't been questioned. All these people named, and here we go. Here we go. And yeah, I've said it over and over again. I'll say it again for the disclaimer's sake. Add the little asterisk, highlight it, put it in the footnote. If Donald Trump did those things, I want to know about that too. If your mother did those things, I want to know about it. If your Uncle Charles did it, I, if Santa Claus did it, I want to know if he's on Epstein's list. We know he's checking the naughty list. He might be paying a visit. I want to know, is Santa Claus on there? If the Easter Bunny hop, hop, hopped into your kid's room and did something evil, I want to know about it. Because I got a rope that'll fit around the Easter Bunny's neck, too. We'll eat that dude. <laughs> we'll tenderize that rabbit meat. Mmm. Drinking out of a mason jar here. They're cheaper than buying glasses, honestly. You can buy you can buy like a dozen mason jars for eighteen bucks at the Kroger, and you don't have to. You, you they break. You haven't broken anything. Forget the fine china. Mm. You're like, why is that pink? It's water with electrolytes. Oh my gosh. Hey, here's another cover up. Here's something that just bugs the ever living mess out of me. Um, let me get over to this. Here, here's here's interesting. Now, now again, I want to say this because I've said it so many times. I don't trust any of the governments of men. It's amazing to me, Hakeem Jeffries, who, who all these people came out this week. Hakeem Jeffries, who's the minority whip, uh, House Minority Leader, I should say, uh, there in Congress. Hakeem Jeffries, who wants to be Barack Obama so bad, he comes out and he says, oh, he said, you know, this, um, this, what, <laughs> this election fraud accusations and stuff. These people are criminal. They, they should be held accountable for questioning the 2020 election. It's amazing to me that Hakeem Jeffries, who's a black guy, who's consistently come out and spoken against the systemic racism that exists in America and all of the atrocities of America's history and America's past, is going to come out and say, oh, wait, but no, you better trust everything the government tells you. If they say the government is, is, is certifying elections and they're not fraudulent at all, you should believe the government 100%. Absolutely. You should never question anything. So which is it? The hypocrisy is stupid. The hypocrisy is stupid. So I don't trust any governments of man. I question all of them. But speaking of hypocrisy and cover-ups and craziness, why are these Hollywood stars that are coming out to defend Palestine and Hamas, why, why are they coming out? And, and again, we know what happened October 7th. Hamas attacked that, um, that music festival there in Israel. And then they went in, they murdered people, uh, executed them, beheaded them, set people on fire. I mean, it was horrible rape, uh, just atrocities that happened on October 7th. And suddenly all of these, you know, Gen Zers in college campuses and the whole free Palestine movement takes to the streets. They're blocking the streets. They're blocking traffic. And uh, pushing, you know, Osama bin Laden's letter to America, sympathizing with it on TikTok, uh, proclaiming death to Israel. Uh, and by the way, they say we're coming for the Saturday people first and then the Sunday people. So that means death to America, too. That means they want the Jews and the Christian. When they say from the river to the sea, they are talking about the eradication of the Jewish people. That's exactly what they're saying. But yet Hollywood's out there pushing this stuff. These big stars and influencers are out there pushing for this so-called ceasefire. And if anybody speaks out in support of Israel, they're getting canceled. They're getting throttled. They're being deplatformed. And, um, you know, I saw where David Schwimmer from Friends, he's been outspoken about it. Gal Gadot, who's Wonder Woman and freaking hot. Uh, Noah Schnapp, Schnapp, however you say his name, Amy Schumer, who I don't like as a person. 
But that's okay. She, she speaks out for Israel, and guess what? You're out. You're out. But these celebrities are coming out in support of Hamas. Well, they're coming out, and they call it Palestine, pro-Palestine. But again, Palestine placed Hamas in as their leadership. Hamas is, of course, connected through, uh, is, is funded and connected to Iran. They're the puppets of Iran. Um, and I won't even get into the fact that the leaders of Hamas live in Doha, which is in Qatar, and uh, Lindsey Graham keeps going over there to visit in Doha. And uh, not only that, Texas A&M University has a Qatar campus in Doha. Uh, and, you know, Texas A&M has a lot to do with um, uh, with our nuclear weapons. They do, man. They, they provide a lot of research for our nuclear weapons. And they also are leaders in uh, biosciences, bioengineering, all these kind of things that are, could be really, really dangerous and detrimental if it got in the wrong hands. Well, funny enough, the University of Texas A&M in Qatar, that campus is funded. Uh, all the salaries, all of the staff, all of the facilities, everything on campus, all funded by Qatar. And guess what they get to do? Qatar gets to have 100% ownership of all intellectual property that comes out of the Texas A&M campus right there. So that's that's fantastic. That is just fantastic that Qatar has that kind of access to that type of uh, research information being done by Texas A&M. But I digress. I digress. Um, Hollywood is using these mega influencers to share this narrative. You got, uh, if you're pro-Israel, if you say anything, about Israel, in support of Israel, then social media is suppressing that content. They're pushing pro-Palestinian content. This is a fact. I can speak to this myself because I've seen it. I've seen it. Why? Why are they covering up certain information and allowing other information to flow? Hollywood is calling out pro-Israel celebrities and telling telling them to cancel them. Um, they don't want you to hear the truth. They don't want you to hear the truth. But here's the thing. And I don't care if it's Bella Hadid. I don't care if it's uh, Zara Larson, Mia Khalifa. You remember Mia Khalifa? I mean, don't nobody nobody wants to go to church and have a conversation about Mia Khalifa, who was this porn star, who Lebanese. She comes to America, you know, and then she comes out pro Palestinian. She actually called Hamas freedom fighters. Um, honey, they would behead you the moment you stepped off the airplane in Gaza. They would they would take you, rape you, and kill you, and rape you again while you're dead. They, they, they do not care anything about you. Haley Bieber, Selena Gomez, Mark Ruffalo, Taylor Swift. I mean, Taylor Swift, all of these people, it's interesting that somebody like Taylor Swift, imagine the hypocrisy. Taylor Swift, I don't know if you know this, but she, she's very, very supportive of the LGBTQ2A plus whatever alphabet soup army that's out there. She's very supportive. If you know her backup singers, her players, her band members, there's a lot of, lot of gay people gay people in the band, a lot of backup dancers out there, that little light, you know what I'm saying? Taylor's all about that. Great. She's all about the feminist movement. Taylor Swift's all about the gays. She's all about progressive causes. But then you're going to turn around and support Hamas slash Palestine's ideology and, and how all that needs to be accepted. Mm. See, those two things. See, you can't do a show in Gaza, Taylor. You can't go do a show. Because they would, they would again, they'd kill all your backup dancers. And they'd probably kill you too. Because you represent the West. You are the great Satan. So it blows my mind, the hypocrisy of, of what people are, are trying to push and then what they're trying to suppress. And, and that's just a perfect example. Look at it, folks. And it's only going to get worse. 2024 is about to get nuts, y'all. It's about to get nuts. This crazy suppression of opinion and thought and truth and all of these things, it's about to get insane. So buckle up, folks. You better prepare yourselves. You really better prepare yourselves for what's coming. Um, gosh, we got to go. I, there's so many things, Shy, I want to get into. I guess we'll have to talk about it on another episode. But um, uh, I want to know who's on Epstein's tapes. That's the deal. I don't want to watch the tapes. That's gross. But they're out there. I don't want to know who's on those tapes. Why are they suppressing? Why are they suppressing that type of information? Something worth knowing. Um, uh, guys, I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple of things before I go. I, I, I got a live show coming up, uh, Wesley Chapel, Florida. Actually, we're going to be in, um, on the 21st, we're going to be in Houston at, at Two Tones. I'm Jesse Payton is headlining. I'm going to go over there and support him, do a few minutes of comedy, try out some new material over there. So if you're in the, um, in the, 
the Woodlands area, which is North Houston. Come hang out with us on the 21st. I think that's a Sunday night. But then my tour kicking off, Wesley Chapel, Florida, there at Side Splitters. Two nights, uh, January 26th, 27th, watchchad.com. That's where all the fun stuff is. It has all the information. And then we're headed over to Memphis, February uh, 1st, and uh, Van Buren, Arkansas, February 2nd, Shreveport, Louisiana, February 3rd. Doing Going to do a Back in the Woodlands in spring, Texas, actually. It's all the same. Going to be at Dosi Do. Just discovered we're going to be, just found out this week, we're going to do a Valentine's comedy show on February 16th at Dosi Do's. Uh, great listening room there in the Woodlands and um, in spring, spring, whatever you want to call it, right on I 45. It's cool. And then the very next night, taking the ragamuffins out, we're coming back to Fredericksburg on February 17th. Be back for what I anticipate being another sold out show at the Rockbox Theater. So get your tickets, watchchad.com. And you know what, guys? I got a I got a text message this morning from one of my daughters. I always joke about my kids. I'm so proud of them. They're so accomplished, you know. I, I got one. Congratulations to my oldest. She just got another teaching job while she's finishing her uh, master's degree. And uh, you know, many of you know that my my next oldest is she works for Disney, and she is um, a, a very plays a very prominent role uh, as a as a performer touring. And I'll, I'll just leave it at that because there's a lot of crazies out there that try to find out information. But um, very proud of her as a performer. She does great. No, she hasn't bought into the wild influences that the uh, the upper echelons of Disney are trying to espouse. But is what it is. 19-year-old. She's a published author. She's doing a fantastic job as a, as a college and university student. And then my 17-year-old, the same. He's a, child, he's a math prodigy. Uh, incredible, his accomplishments. But I will tell you, my, uh, got, I got a message from a 19-year-old. She said, I just had a tire blowout, and uh, I'm taking it in to have the thing serviced. Can you, can you help me a little bit on this tire? So I sent her some money. And I always joke about it. I say, you know, I can always tell if the kids, when they send me a text message, if they need money, because it's the message is longer than one sentence. They have to go into a little more explanation. You know, they got to butter dad up. You know, oh, I know I hadn't talked to you much lately, but sure do love you so much, dad. I miss you so much. Oh, and by the way, by the way, um, here's what's going on. And I say that tongue in cheek, joking. I love my kids. They're great kids. And I'm, I'm so thankful for them. But I, I was thinking about that this morning because she did. She had a tire that blew out. And of course, I was more than willing to, to help her. Um, I'll give you a little devotional thought, guys, uh, as we head into the craziness that I'm telling you, we're one week in and this nonsense is crazy. As we head into 2024, um, talk to your father about more than just what you need. Okay, he wants you to check in, and when I talk about your father, that's that's God, your father, and and make sure he is your father first of all. Uh, make sure that relationship is is in place the way it, it needs to be. Uh, you know, it, Jesus said nobody comes to the Father unless they come through Him. So I'll let you sort that a little bit out while you're out there exercising your critical thinking. Um. But uh, God would like to hear from you a little bit more often than just when you need something. So why don't you get in the process of, of communicating with him, a little, with him a little bit throughout the day? And, and sometimes when those blowouts in life happen, they won't be as severe as you think they're going to be because you, you got pretty direct access to a father who loves you so much, who has said he's willing to give you what you need. And, and if, if you need an egg, he won't give you a stone. And if you need you know, a, a piece of bread, he's not going to, or if you need a piece of bread, he's not going to give you a stone. If you need a, you know, an egg, he's not going to give you a scorpion. So in other words, he's going to give you good things, not dangerous things. So check in with your father a little bit. Uh, there's so much stuff to get into. We'd have to save it for another episode, Shy, but I sure appreciate everybody who tunes in here. Go to watchchad.com where all the fun stuff is. And hey, you want to send me a message? You can send me an email now. Chad at the Chad Prather Show.com. Chad at the Prather Show, the Chad Prather Show.com. And if you want to go visit the Chad Prather Show.com, you can sign up your little email address to get our notifications throughout the week. We're not going to spam you, we're not going to blow you up. You can even put your cell phone number in there because I think we're going to start doing some text capabilities where we can actually talk to folks and give you notifications of when shows are airing and then also send you some information along the way. I'd love for you to join our email list. So go to, and it's key, you got to put T-H-E, the, in front of it, thechadprathershow.com. 
head over there and give me your information. We're going to need all of your information, okay? The man in the cowboy hat must have it. So, thechatpraythershow.com. And if you want to email me, you can complain, you can bitch, whine, moan. I don't care. You can say word, send words of encouragement, uh, but send me an email, chad at thechadpraythershow.com, and uh, we'll check it out. Leave a rating, leave a review. Five stars is what we deserve, and help us take this show where it needs to be. Look how beautiful this is. Look how beautiful this is, Shy. This is a gorgeous set. I wish you had something prettier to look at in me, but it is what it is. I'm doing my own makeup these days. I'm doing my own makeup. And uh, you should know that, Shy. If you look at me and it's like, is that guy wearing makeup? Yeah. I don't think we had this conversation. I put a little powder on. Put a little powder on. Looks good in the light. All right, guys. I will check you out down the road. Stay tuned. We're getting the kinks worked out, man, but we're trying to bring you more and more shows throughout the week so I can yell at you more. I love you. I appreciate you. God bless you. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye.